Okay, so when we're doing buckle spacing, we've got to make sure that all the holes, the pierces in our strap are uniform so that when we tighten our buckle, everything fits and we can go a little tighter or a little looser depending on what our body's doing. If you're doing heavy workout or if you're just sitting still, uh, if you've gained weight, if you've lost weight. Uh, so generally what works for me is to find the ideal hole that was our starter hole and then use the ruler. If you have a ruler, generally they're one inch wide. So rather than trying to measure out all these increments, I just flip. So what I'll do is I'll center it on that first hole and then mark my increment. And you can flip it over and mark your next increment like so. And you do the same on the other side. And that gives you, you know, what, uh, five holes. So five, five inches of variance in what you're, what you're wearing. And you know, if you're changing that much in body dimension, that's totally fine, but it's always, it's always good to be able to just, you know, put it on or have a friend try it on and see how they like it. So that's how we've marked our holes. And I like the rulers with the grooves. They come in handy because when you're trying to find center on one inch, all of a sudden you can use that groove as your marker. Uh, no measuring necessary. But if not, you can always fold tape to figure out all those distances um, if you decide you want some strange spacing. Okay, so now we're gonna use that same trick with our small hole, right? Boop. And then do it again on the other side. Boop. And then what we can do is use that center groove on our ruler again to find the half inch mark. And so because it is a half inch belt, I like doing the hole spacing for those in half inch increments rather than whole inch increments um, because it's proportional to the belt size. So at that point, you just need to make sure that you check that you're punching holes that are appropriate for the prong or toggle of your buckle, but it fits through nicely, right? We've gone over that before, but it's always good to review. And so we're just gonna go through and punch all five holes. And this is a nice soft um, oil tan leather. So it's a very comfortable thing to wear. Uh, the veg tan doesn't make great strapping. I like the oil tan because it's pliable. It wears well with the skin. And if it's rubbing on your skin, it'll actually end up treating itself with more of the oil that it needs. And it'll save you from having to go and get, um, I believe it's Neat's Foot Oil to soften the leather. I have a bag I picked up in Mexico that um, <laughs> I've had since probably 2012. And it's, it's seen a lot of love and it gets used every day, but it still fatigues and needs some extra oil in areas that get creased and folded. And this oil tan leather is just such a nice material to wear. It's very comfortable. It's very sturdy. So now that we're switching to our big strap, obviously we need to change our hole so that it matches our prong. So we're gonna go find the right size. And that would be this one right here. So we'll just rotate that down and do our last five holes. Let's start here. Last one. Oops. There we go. So then you have all the holes you need. You have all the spacing you need. Uh, you can trim it to length if you'd like. We can always adjust these long straps to give you a little bit more tightness or tolerance. If you decide that this thing is flopping around too much, it can pop, like you can pop this rivet off and adjust it in one direction or another so that it mirrors this sort of angle that we have um, from the front. 
but I found when you're doing your testing, I will give it a wear for a while to see how the strap behaves once you have your five different sizes that you like.